Greetings and welcome back everybody to another video about the Samsung Galaxy Tab S5 e So in this video, I'm going to show you 25 amazing features of the Tab S5 e And along the way, I will also give you some tips and tricks that you might find helpful. Alright, so let's begin. Okay, so the first feature I'm going to show you is call and message continuity. Now the Tab S5 e I've got is Wi-Fi only version. That means this does not have a SIM card and that also means there is no cellular connection on this tablet. Now here's the thing, even though this tablet does not have a SIM card and neither does it have any cellular connection, you can still make cellular phone calls. So as you can see, there's this phone icon here and message icon. So if I tap over here, this will open up the dialer and I can call someone right from over here even though this tablet does not have a SIM card in it. See no LTE connection over here but I can still dial a phone number. That is amazing isn't it? And take a look at what, what it's saying. Calling using Galaxy S10 Plus. So the tablet is actually linked to my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and the link between the tablet and the phone allows us to make and receive phone calls and also send and receive text messages even though the tablet does not have a cellular connection. So now let me show you how this works. Okay, so I've got my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and this phone is right now linked to my Tab S5 e through the Samsung account. So the thing is you'll need to sign in with your Samsung account for this call and message continuity to work on both of these devices. And this feature works over the internet so both your tablet and your phone needs to have an active internet connection. And it goes without saying you will need a Samsung smartphone for this to work. Now I think the way call and message continuity works is that whenever you make a phone call from your tablet, the tablet will send instruction to the phone through the Samsung account to make a phone call. The phone makes the cellular call because the phone has the SIM card, this one does not. So the phone will dial the number and it will transfer the sound to the tablet and it will also receive the mic sounds from the tablet to the phone. So this is quite an amazing feature. Again, it works over the internet connection and your phone does not need to be connected to the same Wi-Fi. Even if you're on mobile data, it will still work. So right now I have switched off Wi-Fi, but I will still be able to make phone calls using the tablet and the phone does not need to be close uh, to the tablet. See, I'm still able to make phone calls and you can see over here, there's a phone call going on. So we will just close this. So now let me show you how you can set up call and message continuity because I think this is quite an amazing feature. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is grab your tablet and then go to the settings, drop down your notification panel, tap on the gear icon, then tap on connections, then tap on call and message continuity and turn this feature on. So I think after you turn this feature on, the tablet will ask you to sign in into your Samsung account. This does not work without a Samsung account because the call and message continuity feature uses the Samsung account to communicate between your phone and the tablet. And once you're done signing in with your Samsung account, you will see the email account over here. I've just hidden it because that's my personal email account. So now we are going to link the Samsung Note 10 Plus. Previously, I had linked my Samsung S10 Plus. I want to use the number which is on this phone because this phone has my main number. Okay, so I'm going to unlock the phone, drop down the notification panel, go to settings, scroll down here to advanced features, then tap on call and text other devices. Make and receive calls and text on other Samsung Galaxy devices signed in into your Samsung account. So I will just turn this feature on and tap on agree. And that's it. You will see this screen. This is the Note 10 Plus. You can select the SIM card from over here. I have got only one SIM card over here, so SIM 1. Use mobile networks. Let other devices make and receive calls and messages through your phone, even when it's not connected to Wi-Fi. You should turn this on because uh, Wi-Fi might not be available everywhere. And the bottom option shows registered devices, which is our tab as 5 e and it's enabled. Now the procedure is slightly different on the S10 Plus so you might not see call and text on other devices in the advanced setting on the S10 Plus and older Samsung Galaxy smartphones. So drop down your notification panel here, go to settings and you will find call and message continuity in the connections over here. See call and message continuity. It's not there in the advanced settings. See, you don't have call and text on other devices in the advanced settings on the S10 Plus. So I think that's important. If you have an older Samsung smartphone, you will find this feature under the connections and not under advanced features. Okay, so that is pretty much all you need to do. You will now be able to receive and make phone calls from your tablet and also send and receive text messages. So 
just like that see it's using the phone to make a phone call now one thing uh, now one thing to keep in mind is that the tablet does not have a earpiece speaker so whenever you make and receive phone calls the main speakers of the tablet will be activated obviously you can use a bluetooth headset or you can use a normal headset with the tablet that's how you can get some privacy otherwise it will just use the main speakers of the tablet and all said and done this feature is awesome sometimes you might be using your tablet your phone might be charging somewhere else at your home you can just use the tablet to make and receive phone calls and quickly i'm going to ring up the note 10 plus you will see the phone call on the tablet just like that you can actually see the phone is ringing you can see the edge lighting over there but i'm receiving the phone call on my tablet amazing right Enjoying the content? Well, make sure to subscribe and do press that bell icon so that you can get notifications to my latest uploads. Let's continue. So now let me show you the flagship or the signature feature of the Tab S5 e and that is Samsung DeX or Samsung Desktop Experience. Now I have already done a video of Samsung DeX running on the Galaxy Note 10 Plus and to use Samsung DeX on the Note 10 Plus you will need to connect the phone to the computer through USB. But the thing is, on the Tab S5 e you can use Samsung DeX as it is on the screen of the tablet. So you don't need to connect this tablet to your computer and you don't need any cables to use Samsung DeX. So let me go ahead and turn on Samsung DeX. So we will drop down the notification panel, go to settings, then we will go to advanced features and turn on Samsung DeX from over here. But before we turn this on, let me just tap over here and let me show you the settings. You can also use Samsung DeX on larger screen using an HDMI cable. So in case you have the USB Type-C to HDMI cable, you will be able to use Samsung DeX on a big screen. So let's turn on Samsung DeX. So once it is turned on, the screen orientation will change to landscape like this. So this is Samsung DeX. So what I'll do is I will connect my Bluetooth mouse so that I can give you a much more in-depth review of this. So just a sec guys, I will connect my Bluetooth mouse and I will just keep the tablet on a stand and, and I will be right back. So guys, here we are and this is our desktop and I'm just using my Bluetooth mouse to control the pointer on the tablet. And you guys might be able to tell this is quite similar to Windows 10. So we have some icons here on desktop. You can double click to launch the application and I'm just using the scroll wheel on the mouse to scroll through the photos and you can just minimize the app if you want and it gets minimized over here and if you hover your mouse over the icon it gives you a little thumbnail and it's actually giving you a live thumbnail preview so if I open up this picture minimize it will actually show you that picture so just like I said guys this is kind of like Windows so we will just minimize this and if you press on this button it takes you to your app launcher so these are all the apps that are installed on the tablet and whenever you open applications in Samsung DeX mode they open up in a window like this see just like on a Windows 10 PC and you can just right click close and the app will close and let me just launch Chrome web browser so I think Samsung DeX makes multitasking a lot easier so you can have multiple apps open like this. I can place this here. So take a look at this guys. A YouTube video is playing. I've got the web browser open and I've got the gallery open and I can go ahead and open up even more apps. So maybe I want to make a document. I can open up Google Docs and start working on a new document. And if you have a Bluetooth keyboard connected, you can see how easy it is. You can just type over here, copy paste from this web page and keep on watching your YouTube video and you can work on your document. So this is true multitasking in Samsung DeX. So we will now close these apps, press on this recents button and tap on close all and all of these apps will close. So now let me try and explain to you different stuff. So this is your recents button, this is your home button and this is your back button. This will show you all your recent notifications and this is the Bluetooth Wi-Fi and this is the battery if you click on this it will take you to the battery settings Let's close this This will pop open the quick settings So this is very similar to what you get when you drop down the notification panel on the tablet or on your phone We have the brightness control here You have some quick settings toggle and if you press on the gear icon It will take you to the main settings of your tablet 
let's just close this these are some experimental features Samsung Dex Labs you might want to keep this option on force app to resize and close this then we have the keyboard this just pops open the keyboard then we have the sound toggle and pressing this button takes a screenshot and this is the search and if you press on this it opens up the calendar so complete tablet functionality is available and if you right click on the desktop you get three options sort by clean up page and finally you can change the wallpaper so we can pick one from the gallery you know what I'm gonna pick this wallpaper so that the tablet looks more like a computer so we will now set this as a wallpaper nice now coming to gaming unfortunately I don't have the Bluetooth keyboard otherwise I could have given you a gaming demo but when I was testing Samsung DeX on my Note 10 Plus on the computer, you can actually play games so Asphalt 9 works fine but most of the games are unsupported so for example Modern Combat 5, Gangstar 4 these two do not work in Samsung DeX and PUBG Mobile also does not work. The game itself is able to launch but you cannot control it using the keyboard. So yeah that is one disadvantage you cannot control PUBG with your keyboard otherwise it would have been really nice. But yeah, some games like Asphalt 9 do work fine with the keyboard. But yeah, I think all said and done it's fine because uh, Samsung DeX mode is meant for productivity tasks. Like you can work on your office documents, writing emails and notes. It's really not meant for gaming. So if I go to settings and if I go to controls, see there are no keyboard controls over here. There might be another way to remap the controls but yeah, I'm not gonna go into too much details. So look at how powerful this tablet is. So the game is running in the background and I've got the web browser open and YouTube is also playing back. I mean for a mid-range cheap tablet, this is just amazing. So we've got all these apps running and the tablet is still running without a problem. So yeah, that is quite impressive uh, considering the specifications of this tablet. I don't feel like the game is lagging. So yeah, this is Samsung DeX running on the tab S5V. You can open up apps in a little window like this. Actually, you can open up multiple apps in a window just like you would on a Windows 10 PC. And yeah, regular controls are still available in the game. So that's not an issue. See, this is what I love about Samsung. The number of features they are able to put inside their tablets and their phones that is just amazing. Love it. And finally, once you're done using Samsung DeX, you can go back to tablet mode by pressing over here and then tap on exit DeX, exit Samsung DeX and return to tablet mode. Okay. And now the tablet will be back in its original form. And we will just wait. And that's it. So that was Samsung DeX where you can open up apps in a little window just like you would on a Windows PC and that kind of gives you a true multitasking experience. Now here's the thing, if you want to open up apps in a window, you can also do that in tablet mode so you don't need to go to Samsung DeX mode to use apps in a window. And the way you do this is you launch an application, you go to Recents, then you tap on the app icon, whichever app you want to run in a window, tap on this and select Open in Pop-up View and that will open up the app in a little window like this and once again you can resize this or place it wherever you want on the screen. So this is true multitasking and I can open up multiple apps for example I can even open up calculator again we'll go to recents tap over here and open in pop-up view. You can see the chrome app you can see the chrome web browser has gotten minimized over here in a little bubble like this you can just tap on this and the Chrome web browser will resume. So if you're doing some calculations, you can have your calculator open up here. And this is true multitasking. And yes, you can also do this with the camera app. So we will open up camera. Again, we will go to recents and that minimizes all the apps. You can tap on the camera icon and tap open in pop-up view. And as you can see, the camera app will run in a little pop-up. And I can go ahead and resume all our other apps. So that is Chrome, Calculator, and Camera is also working. So I can quickly take picture and go back to my work. Now this feature also allows you to run YouTube in background. 
so I will just launch YouTube and minimize all these apps. Now here's the thing, Google does not allow YouTube to run in the background. So if I play a video, so a video is playing right now, but if I minimize the YouTube app, the video stops. Now you can use this pop-up view feature to run YouTube app in the background. So I will just launch YouTube back again and we will go to recents, tap on the YouTube icon, open and pop-up view. And now I can play back the YouTube video and resize this to make it small and then I can go back to work open up multiple apps so this is true multitasking in tablet mode and this is called pop-up view so when the YouTube app is running in a little pop-up window like this you can open up any app you want on your tablet so for example I can open up Instagram and YouTube is playing back without any issues and let's go back you can also open up gallery, see no problems. You can also open up camera, camera is running. We were already running camera in our pop-up view so that's why it has launched like this. So we will just minimize and that's it. And we can also open up the web browser. So this is a very useful feature because this will allow you to watch your favorite music videos on YouTube. Meanwhile, you can also browse the internet. So this is how you can use the pop-up view to run YouTube in the background. And if you want to close YouTube, just press on that cross icon and YouTube will close. If you guys have ever used your phone or your tablet in bed, you know how annoying auto rotate really is. So most of the times if you're watching a video or if you are browsing the web, you might hold your tablet at a weird angle like this. And this creates a little problem because the screen kind of auto rotates. Now obviously you can turn auto rotate off, but that involves multiple steps. You will drop down your notification panel then turn auto rotate off and now the screen orientation is locked. Now if you want to bring your tablet back to portrait mode again you have to drop down the notification panel then disable auto rotate and then lock the screen in portrait mode. So here's the thing guys you don't have to actually perform those multiple steps just to unlock and lock the screen orientation. So right now the screen orientation is locked in portrait mode. So watch what happens when I change the orientation of the tablet to landscape we get this little icon here and once you press on this icon the screen orientation will change and now the screen orientation is locked in landscape so if i bring my tablet back to portrait see the screen orientation does not change and if you are holding the tablet like this at a weird angle this is very useful because the screen orientation does not change and obviously it eliminates those multiple steps of dropping down the notification panel then disabling the rotation lock and then re-enabling it so once again, if I have to bring the tablet back to portrait mode, I will press this button and the screen is now in portrait mode and once again, it is locked in portrait mode. So this will save you multiple steps of dropping down the notification panel, then enabling and disabling that rotation lock. And this works in almost every application. So for example, if I launch YouTube and if I tilt my tablet like this, you guys will see that screen orientation toggle icon. Do you have nosy friends who borrow your tablet to watch a YouTube video or to browse the internet or maybe click some pictures but instead they don't do that, they actually minimize the app and they start browsing all your personal stuff. Also might open up your messaging app and find out that secret person you've been texting. So here's the thing, you can actually lock the app they want to use on the screen and if they want to get out of the app, they will have to enter your pin code to exit the app and get inside the tablet and this is called pin windows so now let me show you how you can use this pin window feature to your advantage so let's go back home drop down the notification panel go to settings then over here go to biometrics and security then tap on other security settings then turn this feature on which says pin windows turn it on and then from over here make sure you turn on ask for pin before unpinning. This is very important otherwise anyone can unlock your tablet and also I am assuming that you have a pin code unlock set up for your tablet so I already have it set up so that's fine. Okay so for example now your friend wants to browse the internet on your tablet so what I'll do is I'll launch the web browser I'll go to recents by the way I'm using gestures so this is the recents recents I'll tap on the chrome icon then I will select pin this app app is pinned to unpin this app touch and hold the recents and back buttons at the same time press on ok 
and now the web browser is pinned onto the screen that means you will not be able to exit this and there is no drop down notification panel okay so now if you want to unpin press and hold the recent and the back button and now to enter inside the tablet the tablet will ask for your pin code or your fingerprint and now the tablet is back to normal and the same thing you can do for camera and virtually every other app on your tablet so once again press this and select pin this app and as you can see the camera app is now pinned to the screen i cannot exit this i cannot go to home and i cannot go to my recents so once again if i want to unpin press and hold the recents and the back button and now it says screen has been unpinned and if i go back i will have to enter my pin or use the biometrics to get inside the tablet a very useful feature if you want to prevent your nosy friends from taking a look at your personal information since we are already talking about privacy let me also go ahead and show you another fantastic privacy option on the tab s5e now when you press and hold the power button to power off or restart your tablet you get two options power off and restart there's actually a third hidden option that you can enable and it's called lockdown mode now what lockdown mode does is that it disables the biometrics that means you won't be able to use the fingerprint scanner whenever you have to enter the tablet after turning on lockdown mode you will have to enter your pin code so this feature might come in handy if you are sleeping and your spouse or your friend might unlock your tablet using your biometrics they can just use your finger and they can easily unlock your tablet while you're sleeping but if you activate lockdown mode the fingerprint scanner won't work so yeah this is an added privacy option so now let me show you how you can enable this lockdown mode drop down the notification panel go to settings then tap on lock screen then tap on secure lock settings the tablet will ask you for your pin enter your pin code tap on continue and turn on show lockdown option so watch what happens when I press and hold the power button. It will give you a third option called lockdown mode. So first off, if I lock my tablet without turning on lockdown mode, I can go ahead and unlock the tablet using my fingerprint. Now if I press the lockdown mode option and then lock the tablet, I will not be able to use my fingerprint to get inside my tablet. So when you are sleeping, no one can use your biometrics, that means no one can use your fingerprint to unlock the tablet you will have to enter the pin code and then you will be able to unlock your tablet so this is an extremely useful privacy feature on the tab s5v have you ever noticed whenever you launch an application on your tablet it kind of zooms in like this from the app icon and then it goes full screen so see that and it is the same effect for almost every application on the tablet so if i launch chrome it will zoom in like this and you can change this animation from zooming in to crossfade. Let me show you how. So drop down the notification panel, go to settings, then go to advanced features, then turn on reduce animations. Now this feature does not reduce any animations, but instead it changes the style of the animations. So let's go back. Now if I launch Instagram, instead of zooming in from the app icon, it will just crossfade onto the screen. See the change? So once again, if I launch Chrome, it kind of crossfades instead of zooming in from the icon. YouTube, camera. So yeah, this kind of gives you a little bit different experience on the tablet. And to be honest, I kind of like this crossfade effect more than that zooming in effect. Kind of looks nice. So I just demonstrated how you can change the style of the animations from zooming in to crossfade. But do you know you can also change the speed of the animations and not only you can change the speed of these app launch animations you can also change the speed of these animations which play back whenever you navigate through the menus on your tablet so let me show you how you can change the speed and make your tablet even faster so drop down the notification panel go to settings scroll all the way down and tap on about tablet now over here tap on software information and then repeatedly tap bell number and the tablet will ask you for your pin tap on continue and now you will see a message developer mode has been enabled go back go back once again scroll down and then you will see a secret menu called developer options tap over here and scroll down until you see 
these three options window animation scale transition animation scale and animator duration scale from over here you can tweak the speed of these animations and you can completely turn them off if you would like a higher value gives you slower animations and a lower value gives you faster animations. So first off to demonstrate I will slow these animations down so we will select 2x and right away you can see how slow these animations have become. So this is at 2x. If you want to speed these animations up let's go back here you can set this to 0.5x and right away you can tell that the tablet kind of feels a lot more fast. See how fast everything feels once we speed these animations up and we can navigate through menus really really quickly. Now I do prefer leaving the window animation scale, transition animation scale and animator duration scale to 0.5x. I don't prefer turning it off but 0.5x gives you the best experience and by the way you must leave developer options turned on. If you turn them off it will reset back to 1x. So do keep that in mind. But yeah, I do like this 0.5x option. It does make the tablet feel a lot snappy. Now to show you next few features, I'm gonna have to turn off night mode because we are going to go to visibility enhancements. So night mode is now off. We will go to settings and scroll down here to accessibility. And then over here, we will go to visibility enhancements. Now the first feature in the visibility enhancements is high contrast fonts. Adjust the color and outline of the fonts to make them stand out. If you have difficulties in reading the fonts on your tablet, you might want to turn on high contrast fonts. So watch what happens when I turn on high contrast fonts. See the font kind of becomes a little bit more legible when you turn on high contrast fonts. This might be very useful if you are already having some difficulties in reading the fonts, but I'm going to turn it off. Alright, so the next feature I'm going to show you is negative colors. If you turn this on, everything will be displayed in negative colors. So once we go back, you can see our home screen is also in negative colors. So negative colors does work system wide. I launch Instagram, you can see Instagram is also in negative colors. And this looks so psychedelic, I mean look at that. Let's go back to our visibility enhancements and turn off negative colors. You can also display everything on the tablet in grayscale. Tap on color adjustments and turn this feature on and now everything is being displayed in grayscale. And once again this is system wide so if I open up Instagram you can see everything is in grayscale. Let's go back. Same with YouTube. Everything is in grayscale which is kind of nice. So once again let us go back to the color adjustments. Now rest of these settings are for people who are visually impaired. So if you do have difficulties in perceiving a particular color, Samsung has already got you covered. So we have some options, Pro Tan, Red Green, Dew Tan, Green Red, pay attention over here, and then Tri Tan, Blue and Yellow. So yes, if you do have difficulties in perceiving a particular color, Samsung has got you covered. And like I've said before, color adjustments work system wide so it will also work in Instagram it will also work in YouTube so these are some fantastic options if you have difficulties in perceiving a particular color then you can also set a personalized color so now I'm going to turn this off let's go back and then next up we have color lens now this overlays the screen with a particular color so let's turn it on so we have blue azure cyan green yellow orange red Okay, so the last feature I want to show you in visibility enhancements is triple tap to zoom. So we are still in the visibility enhancements menu inside accessibility. Now from over here, tap on magnification and then tap on triple tap to magnify and turn this feature on. Now to use this feature, quickly tap on the screen three times at the part where you want to zoom in. So if I want to zoom in over here, see that zooms in and you can use two fingers to scroll around and this also works system wide so let's go back let's go back home for example i have chrome web browser over here you know what a better example would be instagram so i have my profile loaded up over here i want to zoom in at this part i will just triple tap and the tablet zooms in and i can use my two fingers to scroll on the screen 
and if I want to zoom out again triple tap and it goes back now you have to disable this triple tap to zoom when you are playing games otherwise if you repeatedly tap on a particular part on the screen when you are playing a game it will zoom in instead of firing your gun anyway so this was triple tap to zoom okay so now let us head over in the gallery because I want to give you some tips now what do you do if you want to select multiple photos in bulk for example I'm gonna select all of these photos I think most of the people will select them individually like this and this does take up a lot of time alternatively what you can do is keep your finger on one photo and once it's selected just swipe like this and then you can quickly select a lot of photos and if you want to deselect just swipe your finger over the selected photos and they will get deselected now you can also hide your photos if you want in the gallery go to albums tap on these three dots and then select hide or unhide albums now over here you cannot hide your camera album and you cannot hide your screenshots rest of the photos can be hidden so these two albums are just folders inside the micro SD card and inside the tablet this is on the tablet itself and that is on the SD card it shows a little icon so we can just hide this and now there are almost no photos inside the gallery but yeah the thing is this is not password protected so anyone who knows their way around Samsung tablets will know where to go but still it gives you a little bit of protection from prying eyes because it does involve multiple steps if your friend wants to unhide these photos now what do you do if you want to make a collage I think most people will download a third-party app from the Play Store but you don't need to do that because the built-in gallery app already has a collage maker built in so I will just select six photos by the way six photos are the maximum that you can select six photos then I'll press on these three dots and then select create collage and tap on allow and as you can see the tablet creates a collage for you and you can change the aspect ratio if you want you can make the borders a little bit curvy and then you can change the thickness of the borders you can change the color of the borders which is really good I will just leave it on white and we can go back and we have different styles and if you want you can select this infinity button and change the size of the tiles on your own and if you tap on this pencil icon it will open up the image editor in case you want to crop or if you want to make any adjustments to the photo you can also add stickers from over here apply and you can see there's a little sticker that we just added if I tap on save the tablet will save this collage in the gallery and here we have the collage that we just created so you don't need a third-party app in order to make a collage there's already a built-in collage maker inside the gallery so that is the built-in collage maker but you can also create an animated gif image so once again I will select a couple of photos actually for to create a gif let me select 13 15 photos so I'll tap on these three dots and then tap on create gifs and the tablet will create an animated GIF image for me and can change the speed I will keep it on one because that's fine then you can change the direction you can change the aspect ratio if you like and these are all the images that we have added inside the GIF and if you want to edit a particular image just tap on this button and then you can edit this you can draw something you can add a text so yeah this is quite a powerful little gif creator and you can see that little editing that we just did and this is our animated gif that we just created and you can share this with whomever you want by pressing the share button I don't know if you have ever noticed but it's quite tedious to take a screenshot so what do you do to take a screenshot on the tab S5V you hold down the power button and the volume down button together and that takes a screenshot as you can see but actually there's an easier way to take a screenshot by swiping your palm on the screen from right to left let me show you how you can enable that feature so drop down the notification panel go to settings and go to advanced features then tap on motion and gestures and turn on palm swipe to capture 
Now once you turn on palm swipe to capture, all you need to do is swipe your palm from right to left on the screen like this and it will take a screenshot. And this method of taking screenshots by swiping your palm on the screen is a lot more convenient compared to pressing and holding the power button and the volume down button together. So whenever you capture a screenshot, you see this little black bar down over here and this allows you and this bar has a couple of features. You can crop the image directly after taking a screenshot and you can also draw something on it. So if you want to annotate a particular part of the image, you can do that and press on save and the screenshot will be saved in the gallery. Now this is called smart capture and if you don't see that black bar at the bottom of the screen, as soon as you take a screenshot, it might be disabled. So go to settings, tap on that gear icon, then tap on advanced features and make sure smart capture is turned on. Now smart capture will also let you take a screenshot of the entire page. So I will take a screenshot. So whenever you take a screenshot, it first takes a screenshot of the page that is visible. And you see this icon over here, press on this and the screenshot tool and the smart capture tool will take a screenshot of the entire web page. And that's it. The screenshot of an entire web page has been taken and this will be saved in our gallery. And as you can see, it has captured the entire web page in full resolution. Very useful for taking screenshots of long web pages like this. Now, unfortunately, unlike the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, the Galaxy Tab SYV does not have a straight up built in screen recorder that you can use to record visuals of your screen, especially visuals of apps. See, there is no built in screen recorder, but you can actually trick the game launcher into thinking a particular app is a game. So Game Launcher already has a built-in screen recorder to record visuals of games and you can use that screen recorder to record visuals inside applications. So first off, you will need to enable Game Launcher from the settings. So drop down the notification panel, tap on that gear icon, tap on advanced features and then turn on Game Launcher. Once Game Launcher is enabled, open up Game Launcher. Then swipe up like this then tap on these three dots and select add apps. Now from over here, add an application in which you want the screen recorder to work. For example, I will tap on Instagram, then tap on add. And now you will have to launch Instagram from the game launcher if you want the screen recorder to work in this application. So I will launch Instagram. And once you launch Instagram from the game launcher, you will see game tools in the notification panel. Tap over here and this will open up the screen recorder option. Tap on the record button and that is pretty much it. Now the screen recording is going on and whatever I do on the tablet is being recorded into a .mp4 file which you can share with anyone you like. See the screen recording is going on. I will just tap this and the screen recording will be saved in the gallery. So we will go to gallery and this is our screen recording. If you want to save some battery power on your Tab S5e without actually turning on the battery saver mode, you might want to add apps to a list called sleeping apps. So drop down the notification panel, tap on that gear icon, scroll down here to device care, go to battery, then again tap on these three dots and select settings. Now over here you have this sleeping apps list. Now sleeping apps will not run in the background and they will also not send you any notifications. So if you have some apps that you aren't going to use frequently, I suggest that you add them to sleeping apps list so that they don't run in the background and they don't suck your battery power. But do keep in mind, don't add an important app to the sleeping app list. For example, if you have WhatsApp installed, don't add WhatsApp to sleeping apps list. Otherwise it will not receive any notifications. So this is one way you can save some battery power without turning on the battery saver. When you're out on a camping trip, a power source might not be available to charge the battery of the tablet. In that case, you might want to turn on a feature called maximum power saving so that all the third party apps are disabled and the CPU speed is capped to 70%. In that case, you might want to turn on a feature called maximum power savings mode. So drop down the notification panel and tap on this power mode option. Here we have three options, optimized, medium, and maximum power save. If you want the tablet to last a really long time on a single charge, turn on maximum power savings mode. Now, maximum power savings mode will disable most of the third-party apps, 
then it will cap the CPU speed to 70% and it will restrict all the background data. And let's click on apply. And you guys will see most of the apps will get disabled and we will just wait. So now maximum power savings mode has been turned on and it says at 62% the tablet will last about 5 days. So this is a very useful power saving feature if you are not near a power source, might not be able to charge the battery. And as you can see, most of the third party apps are not available. And only the basic applications like music, YouTube, gallery and camera are available. And yes, you can still take pictures. And if we go to settings, you can see how simplified everything is. So yes, if the third party apps are disabled they will not run in the background and they will not drain your battery so this maximum power savings mode is a really useful feature if you are not near a power source to charge the battery of your tablet perfect for long camping trips and we will bring the tablet back to optimized and our tablet is now back to normal so guys we are almost at the end of this video and the final feature i'm going to show you is called secure folder now to put in simple words secure folder is like a password protected folder and it has its own separate applications a separate play store so yeah you can kind of call secure folder tablet inside of a tablet because it has its own separate working space you know what let's turn on secure folder and i will show you how it works so drop down the notification panel and you should see secure folder over here Tap on this and the tablet will show you this screen. Now if you don't have secure folder in your drop down notification panel here, go to settings, then go to biometrics and security and over here you should see secure folder. Now you will have to sign in with your Samsung account so I'm just going to set secure folder up and I will be right back. Okay so once you successfully sign in with your Samsung account, the tablet will show you this screen. So it's asking me to set a secure folder lock type. So this will be the unlock method of your secure folder. I will set this to pin because it's easier but if you want a more complicated method, you can select password. I will select pin and click on next. Now I will enter my pin. If you want you can set a different pin, I will just enter my tablet unlock pin. You don't need to do that, you can set a separate pin to unlock the secure folder. I will tap on continue, re-enter to verify. So this is secure folder and as you can see we have a couple of apps here and these apps are running completely separate of the main system on the tablet. So if I go to gallery over here you guys will see the gallery is empty but if I go to my home screen and access this gallery I have a couple of pictures over here. That is because the secure folder gallery is completely separate of the main gallery which is on the tablet. To go back into the secure folder, you will need to open up the app drawer and you will find the secure folder icon over here. Just tap on it and you will be back inside the secure folder. Now did you guys notice the tablet did not ask for a pin code or the biometrics? That is because the secure folder is unlocked. Tap on these three dots and select lock and now the secure folder is locked. Now when I open secure folder, the tablet will ask for a pin or my fingerprint. And that is how I will be able to get back inside the secure folder. Okay, so if you want to add applications to the secure folder, tap on add apps button and you can add applications that are already on your tablet. So for example, I will add Instagram, tap on add and we have Instagram here. Now once again, this Instagram app is completely separate from the main app that is already on the tablet. So if I open this up, the app will ask me to sign in. But the main app, which is on the tablet over here, is already signed in. So this is running completely separate of the app, which is inside the secure folder, which is this one. And the second way you can add apps over here is through the Play Store. So if I tap on Play Store, the tablet will open up a fresh Google Play Store. And once again, this is completely separate. So we will have to sign in into this Play Store. And you can sign in with a separate Google account. You don't need to use the same Google account that you already use on the tablet. So this is why I said this is like a password protected tablet inside of a tablet because it has its own working space. And the same thing applies to all of these apps. If I take pictures using the camera in the secure folder, these pictures will stay inside the secure folder gallery. They will not be available in the main gallery. But if you want, you can move this photo to the main gallery. So 
select this, tap on these three dots and select this option move out of secure folder and that's how you can move the photos inside the secure folder gallery out to the main gallery. And you can do the same with the main gallery. If we open up the main gallery, I can select a couple of these photos and press on these three dots and select move to secure folder. So if you do have your personal stuff in the main gallery, you can easily move them to the secure folder. And as you can see, all of these pictures are now in the secure folder and we can go back and lock the secure folder and these photos are no longer available here but if you want to see them you will have to enter the password and then you will be able to see those photos inside the gallery so secure folder is a fantastic privacy tool on the tab s5e okay so take a look at this i am going to lock my tablet now when i unlock my tablet with my thumb we go directly to the home screen which is the normal unlock method but if I unlock my tablet using my right index finger, we go directly into the secure folder. Awesome, right? This feature is called dedicated fingerprint unlock for the secure folder. Let me show you how you can set this up. So I will just lock the secure folder and get out of here. So now drop down the notification panel, go to settings, go to biometrics and security, tap on fingerprints, enter your pin. Now over here, what you want to do is register the fingerprint of the finger which you want to use to unlock the secure folder. I have already done that. This is my right thumb fingerprint and this is my right index fingerprint. And you also might want to rename these so that it becomes easier for you to identify which fingerprint it really is. So now we have to go back inside the secure folder, launch secure folder, enter your pin, tap on OK. Now tap on these three dots and select settings. Now over here, tap on lock type, enter your pin, tap on continue. Now from this screen, tap on dedicated fingerprint and from over here, select the fingerprint which you want to use to directly go to the secure folder. And I have already selected my right index finger, so that's it. And that's all you need to do. So we will go back, lock the secure folder and let me just quickly demonstrate this once again. So I will just lock my tablet, but first off, I will make sure we have closed all the apps so I will lock the tablet and now I will unlock my tablet with my right thumb and this is my usual unlocking method it goes directly to the home screen now I will unlock my tablet with my right index finger and this takes us directly to the secure folder so this is an easy way to get directly inside the secure folder you don't have to open up the app drawer and tap on secure folder to get inside over here so this is more of a hidden feature but I thought I'll include this in this video itself because I'm not going to make a separate hidden feature video for this tablet. I think it will be too repetitive. So now I'm going to show you how you can access the hidden service menu on your tablet. And service menu has some predefined tests that you can use to diagnose if there's anything wrong with the tablet or not. So sometimes the touchscreen might not be working properly. You can use the hidden service menu to check if the touchscreen is working properly or not. And you can also check if there's a dead pixel on the display. So now let me show you how you can open up the hidden service menu. So first off, open up the phone dialer and key in the following code. Star, hash, zero, star and hash. And this will take you to the hidden service menu. So over here you have some tests. The first three are for the display. So this will show you a red screen. You can check if there are any dead pixels. Then green. Then finally blue. So all three primary colors, red, green and blue. And the artifacts you see on the display are not actually visible in real life. It's just due to the camera's downsampling. And if I move the tablet further away, it goes away. So the display is completely fine. You can check the camera, speaker. So it's going to play music on all four speakers and you can test if there's anything wrong with a particular speaker. And you also can test the front camera, the main camera, touch screen. So our touch screen is working fine. So this is the hidden service menu on the tab S5e. You can test different stuff on your tablet before you actually send the tablet to service. And to exit, you will just go back 
Okay, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed and if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe and that like button and do follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. All the links are down in the video description. So guys, thank you for watching this video and do stay tuned for more videos on the Galaxy Tab S5e and I will see you guys next time.